Good afternoon, everyone. Um, I'm Liz Williams. Um, I'm uh, Programme Director of BT's Improving Lives Programme, and I'm absolutely delighted to welcome you today to the third um, Technology for Good Awards. Thank you, Liz, and especially a huge thank you to BT for your continued support for these Technology for Good Awards. We just simply couldn't have done them without you and have grown them to such a significant event. AbilityNet started the Technology for Good Awards as a way of bringing together charities, businesses and individuals to celebrate the many ways that technology can be used to help make the world a better place. The judges are drawn from our partners and our sponsors who all come together to make these awards possible. And so I thank you for your efforts and expert knowledge in bringing real credibility to our Technology for Good Awards. Um, looking back to the, the first ceremony in 2011, I think we were all a little bit unsure about what to expect, but once we started to hear the incredible transformative stories that were told uh, on this stage, um, it was obvious that we had a, a hit on our hands. This year's special award was chosen by the panel of judges, the honours and contribution and commitment of an extraordinary woman. I've always concentrated on the social, economic, legal and ethical issues, both on te technology for women uh, and appropriately for the 4th of July, uh, for independent living for those with disabilities. As the Technology for Good Awards are very much about learning from what others are doing, we'll now take the opportunity to find out more about the winners. And then, just to add some excitement to the proceedings, uh, we'll be asking you, the audience, to make your choice for the Winner of Winners Award. In 2011, the RNIB issued a challenge out to the banks because there was less than 70 ATMs within the UK that could offer speech and um, service blind and visually impaired. Um, people out there. So it was a, a, an exciting few months and a great delivery by a brilliant team really. So we've always been about doing the great things that technology is, is, is supporting in our communities um, but at the same time running great business services. Self Help Services is a user-led mental health charity um, that runs across Greater Manchester. Um, so we do something called e-therapy. Over the past five years now we've raised over £40 million pounds um, last year's challenge was our biggest ever. We supported 350 charities which work right around the world in every cause environment to health, to children's hospices, to schools in Africa. Um, and we took 11,000 donations online in three days. CoClub is a nationwide network of volunteer-led after-school coding clubs for children aged 9 to 11. Uh, we write projects that we give to our volunteers um, who are programmers and they go to their local primary school to teach for an hour every single week. Um, we have over 900 clubs in the UK, so those stats are a bit wrong, because we grow by 100 new clubs a month. Let's go, 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 we have a winner, Self-Help Services. <laughs> Through to the final. We're really, really proud not to just grow vegetables, but we grow people. And our people are our co-workers. They're adults with learning difficulties, physical disabilities, and any health need, our gates are always open. More and more uh, in the IT age, as we are now, people have wanted to get in touch with uh, computers, and this goes from uh, basically eight to something like 90 is uh, probably the oldest. And what they want to do is basically to keep in touch with the world, um, keep in touch with their families in particular, I have either Skype, email, etc. And what we do is we help them, you know, do this through all the ability aids that we can. The project that we call is called Mersey Learn, and it's a Union Learn sponsored uh, project within the Authority, which works mainly with transport workers uh, who are traditionally peripatetic away from main bases, uh, shift workers, uh, low skills. Uh, so we 
started the project off to give them a digital literacy and numeracy skills, so that's mainly what we do. I never actually intended to be here doing this. <laughs> um, in 2010, uh, my mother was diagnosed with vascular dementia. Uh, and not long after we started seeing um, behaviour sort of symptomatic of that condition. Uh, one of the, which was that she was phoning me quite a lot at work, so I was getting 10 or 20 calls a day whilst I was at work. Um, so working in IT, I decided to put a very simple um, clock and date on a computer screen with a simple message that said, Kevin's at work, he'll be home later, and he'll come over and see you. Uh, that worked really, really well. Well, originally, it was just like a school project that we like, didn't really have a choice whether we wanted to do it or not, <laughs> basically. <laughs> and then we thought it would be a good idea to actually do something that could actually help blind people and partially blind people. And then um, we won, we did, we did it as an inter-school competition. And then we got to Windsor Castle. Um, won Windsor Castle and now we study it like this. It's just amazing. It's like unbelievable. We've been definitely <laughs>